Law, the latest receiver of his grace. Great potential dwells within you, doubtless, for you to be chosen thusly. And so does Aureus' wisdom guide my hand in the bestowment of this subsequent boon. Your flesh has been made sacrosanct with the mark of the Dark Crusaders. Prove yourself worthy of this gift. Seek me in the bowels of the bridge. Our work is of the greatest import. Well, hello everybody. Welcome to the Lords of the Fallen. This is going to be part one of the main walkthrough for the Pyric Cultist. You heard that right. Pyric Cultist focused walkthrough for the Lords of the Fallen released 2023. We have to say the Lords of the Fallen a lot because YouTube likes it. In any case, Defiled Sepulchre, the very first area that we have. Let's go over some basics shall we just in case people really enjoyed this in elden ring top left we have our resources let's call it that character resources we have health stamina and in our case mana if you are using a more physical class i don't think we can display it right now that is actually ammunition for throwables instead one of the coolest things about this game is everybody realistically should have a ranged option baked in and even if you're using something like throwing daggers you will not be needing to go farming throwing daggers you'll simply have an amount you can carry which i think is all round just good so that means you don't need to go farming for like 100 throwing daggers and people aren't going to have like 100 in pvp this kind of thing so Obviously, as we are moving forward, we have our first combat here. Now, I don't want to kind of talk about too much combat mechanics immediately. I want to go around the hood first as we kind of walk our way around. Bottom left are our consumable resources, you might call it. So that first one there is the heal. Works exactly the same as the Estus Flask, apart from upgrading it. It's actually way more... Um, useful. I want to show a tip here. If you're going into water that um, is sludgy like this, ordinarily you can't roll, it, you can't jump through it. But if you start out sprinting, even if you stop a little bit, you can still do one jump. That's just going to speed up getting across. And then you can roll the rest of the way. So just bear that in mind, otherwise you're just going to be stuck. It's really slow look, so just uh, avoid doing that. Um, in addition, you can see us as a caster, we have these mana stones. They are pretty precious to us here very early on. I would advise only using them against the, I guess, second boss, technically, but I don't class. I think his name's Otto. The very first guy as a real boss, to be honest. He's just something we can fight and a bit of a showcase. So here it's showing us how to lock on. If you've played a Souls like before, you need to click your right stick in. This is exactly the same as in basically all of them. You move the stick to move it around. Now you might notice I'm not using spells yet. I'm waiting for the game to tell us when. Oh my god. That uh, pull forward is amazing on these. So I do want to get one of these down so I can show something here. So I'm going to block quite far away. Watch how far this guy can lunge forward. So you need to be really careful about where you are and when you're dodging because they can really catch you off guard with how far they can move forward with that. And as a caster type character, right now we are in an exceedingly weakened position, you might say. But in any case, so just bear in mind, small mana clusters, these are going to be extremely useful. We are going to need to stay topped up on them as mana consumption isn't exactly high. But this game throws so many enemies at you that it's just not enough. So this is an easy bit to miss. Obviously, the game's teaching you to jump here. But I'm going to tell you to go down. Cast down here is 
your first tincture tinct tincture and if you go into your inventory over to your tinctures you'll see that it's right here look and i don't think we can use it right now but later on basically we can color some armor and that is going to be a trophy i need to remember exactly how we do it i did it by accident while i was uh, practicing i just need to get my head back around the controls of that quite embarrassing um but anyways that is a trophy right there so make sure you get that and we can just loop on back around and actually successfully make the jump. Go back to healing. I don't want to waste any of those mana stones. Now, realistically, you shouldn't be going as easy as me against these enemies. You really do want to be not taking damage because it's a bit of a distance to check to the first checkpoint. So here is teaching us about rolling and iframes. Realistically, the iframes are pretty generous. Let me see if we can dodge through this. Um, so just bear that in mind. Obviously, their attacks have a great AOE on them, so be careful of that. And just be, like, mindful of all of the different things we can do here. We've got the dash. If you press it twice, you've got the dash, then the roll. You can get around in a lot of different places. There isn't an easy backstab. So this isn't like Dark Souls or Liza P, where I was able to do, like, a little loop run around, and then I would be able to kind of, like, get a backstab in. Instead, this is more like Bloodborne. We need to do a charge star two for that. Anyways, it's telling us now we can put new equipment on because we've got a rock, okay? We can't equip the rock, so the way this works is, depending on what you put in your ranged hand here, you can have different types of ranged attacks. Actually, this is actually really cool and probably one of the coolest things about this game. So with just a hand, we can actually have a rock here. And one of the best things is, we can actually just equip that rock whenever we want to throw at things, and you're going to see why that's useful in a bit. Whereas as a caster, we have the three slots. We should, in theory, get a fourth one later. I don't know how that expands. Um, I don't know if it goes up to five or anything like this. But for now, all I know is that we get four. And instead of cycling through spells, you can see you get R1, R2, and X. Which means, you see down in the bottom right here, if I press up or down on my D-pad, it's selecting different things. We haven't really spoken about the lamp yet. We certainly will do very soon. But right now, we're going to choose our catalyst. And if you've equipped the rock choose the rock that'll be in exactly the same place we can then go ahead and lock on over here for me on the controller i don't know what pc is going to be but it's the left trigger and now we are in ranged mode release the left trigger we are no longer in ranged mode real nice okay so even though we're a caster be prepared we are actually still a combatant okay enemies can close distances really quickly but it means if something's over there we want to deal with it from from a distance we are in a good position for that and as you can see here, we have this body up on the rope there. If we decide, you know what, we want to not waste our mana on that, we can go ahead and switch over. Now, of course, you can't really do this in combat. Sorry, just took a second there because <laughs> I've got a blue or something coming on. Trust, trust it to be like a game I'm mega excited about this year. And I am uh, suffering with, with ailments. But anyways, we're going to come across this way. Over there, if you use your lantern, you'll see a big flower. Oops, flower. Not do anything about it immediately. We just, we've got to go around the speed and track. Here we get to see a really cool mechanic. I really like this. Um, that, like, in the land of the Umbral, things like different. I don't know if this is some kind of time shift, but it's definitely a realm shift. Don't miss this guy in the dark. Um, he's really easy to miss if you're trying to rush through the zone. I'm trying to do a charge dart too there, but it didn't really work out for me. Hold on, R2 to a multi hit attack. I've not actually tried that. Oh. Always learning new stuff. Now it's going to tell you about attack combos. So, uh, the way this works is you do an attack, right? And then if you do an attack, press triangle, then do another attack, you're actually going to change stance. Right, so we went from one-handed to two-handed there, look, you see? So it doesn't do an extra attack like it does in Bloodborne, but it just changes the stance so you can be changing your moveset as the combos are coming out. This is going to be phenomenal in uh, PvP. People are going to love this. Telling you now, the, uh, the online of this game, if it takes off, is probably going to be... Um, as good as Dark Souls 3, I reckon. Healing, telling you about that here. Um, we already know about that. 
I love how the game expects you to not take that much damage. So here we have a, another demonstration. So press down, get your lantern out. Whilst you're holding your lantern, for me on the controller it's square, which I think on the Xbox makes that X. Hold that down. We are now in the Umbral Realm. If you'd have already died, you're already here. Now, as of right now, the eye itself on the right hand side is not open, so we're not attracting enemies right now, so we don't have to go mega fast. Obviously note that to jump, it is left click on the thumbstick and then A to jump. This actually makes it far superior to the majority of Souls games. It's not as good as Elden Ring necessarily, because Elden Ring has its um, specific jump button, but that is actually very nice. Um, so even though like some of the jumps and stuff are a bit precarious, the jumping itself is not too difficult. So it's telling you about soul flaying, so we can do extra damage to enemies if we target them. Hold the R2 in, bring the uh, apparition towards us. It's one of those things that you kind of have to get used to. You can see as we use the lantern in here, we take like grayed out damage. That is considered withered health. This actually occurs when you uh, block as well. And basically, that'll stay there until we either get hit, in which case we actually lose the health, or we hit an enemy and we actually recover the health. Now, as far as I can tell, we don't actually die from taking withered damage. So this is important to note because when you are blocking, uh, the, some of the damage will go through as withered damage, and this actually ha applies to parrying as well. But as far as I could tell, when I was facing the, the first main boss, this doesn't actually kill you. Particularly with parries, so that, that's quite handy to know. It means you can actually make a bit of a fight back quite nicely. Make sure you grab all of these blisters, because uh, this is just extra currency, which we are going to want. The... Uh, pirate cultist in comparison to the melee classes feels really greedy for stats to me um, Mostly because we have so little health Not exactly tons of stamina and we really really need to pile it on with the Infernal stat because that is our damage and mana in one So if you want to improve your mana economy, that is something you have to do real quickly Now, I'm trying to avoid melee combat for now, because there's actually a weapon in the starting area that I prefer more than the spear. Um, and it is a, an, an, an infernal axe. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to grab that as we're going through. It's not, it's not for a little bit of time now. This is very important. This is actually how we improve the heal, but we can't do that until we beat the first main boss. Falling attack yes everyone's favorite now this as well as we are <coughs> harvesting these blisters I think they're called blisters it's refilling the flame is underneath where the mana bar is, which I haven't spoken about yet. That is how many times you can use the soul flay ability on enemies. Note this doesn't affect your interactions with the terrain. So when you saw us doing the soul flay on some of those bodies and stuff, it doesn't affect that at all. So you can't stop yourself from progressing, um, but it will stop you doing it with enemies. So as of right now, it's showing us about the eye on the right hand side. There is a little kind of highlighted ring around that eye and that is dictating how aware the umbral enemies are of us and as that builds up we're going to get more enemies and we're going to get a higher multiplier from the enemies that we face so if you wanted to you could hang around here and get yourself some extra currency and this is probably the best way to do it so far there are a couple of areas like right next to checkpoints where you'll get plenty of enemies appearing and you can just continually be grinding up some levels if you wish to and, I mean, what level are we now? So we've started at level 10, and it doesn't go over uh, 3,000 until well after, like, level 25. So, you know, you, you can get some pretty easy and decent levels here if you wish to. So here we have a soul flake.
going to open the door. And like I said, the... Uh, Alright, Cultist does definitely feel greedy for levels, so I do not blame you for trying to grind up some extra stuff right now. However, um, when that ring around the eye gets full, we are going to get attacked by an enemy that I've not managed to kill yet. In fact, I haven't managed to damage it. I don't know what we're supposed to do to it. I tried soul flaying it, tried doing those, all sorts of things. So as that kind of gets worked on, I'm sure we'll come across what we're supposed to do with it. And that skull thing that you saw us interact with, that takes you out of the axiom as you just saw. Kind of nice, actually. Uh, the cool thing is, if we get, happen to go down in the... Uh, this is axiom right now. Instead of Umbra, right? This is the world of uh, the living. If we happen to go down in the world of the living, we'll actually get a second chance in the world of the Umbra, which is quite nice. Now we can open the door. In our first checkpoint. I'm going to include this boss in this video. Ordinarily, I like to give bosses their own video because I assume people will look for them and they'll probably want the help with that. So, technically speaking, if you want a better time, you should be upgrading these. This, <laughs> another really cool thing, upgrading your health actually upgrades your equip load. For those that don't know what that means, if you look in the top right hand corner, we have health, mana, stamina, and weight. The higher the weight is, the more equipment you can have on. Now, I'm sure as a caster, we have a bit of a, an advantage because we shouldn't have heavy ranged elements on our character. Uh, so improving your endurance for extra stamina, so that's kind of giving us more actions, or your health is going to give you the ability to have more gear on. So pretty defensive. You could like really pile up the, uh, the vitality here to improve your chances of survival. But for now, I'm going with Inferno. I really want to be... Um, pumping out damage as quickly as I can just because it speeds things up. This first boss isn't too terrible. Also note that just interacting with this hasn't reset the area, it hasn't rested you, hasn't reset any heals or anything. You actually have to actively do that. In addition to activate multiplayer, you need to log in. You could be doing this right now, which is kind of cool. When they said you could do it right from the beginning, they really meant it. I haven't tried multiplayer yet because um, it's not been active for me on the PlayStation, so... Hopefully, when the game launches fully, we can start experimenting with that and see how it all works. So, boss number one. And this one is like a main boss, followed by... Well, not a main boss. This one is mini boss, followed by an optional crazy boss. Um, which I haven't beaten yet. So it feels a bit like the um, first bosses you get in, like, Demon Souls and stuff. Look how big his, uh, his attack ranges. So I think this is supposed to be a parry test, so you know you should be learning kind of spacing, when to press the button to get some parries and blocks in. One of the coolest things for me as a caster is we can do this to recover the uh, withered health. I got hit there because I was trying to show off a bit, but so something worth noting is you can get in there, get some blocks off. Get a parry off, and as long as you don't take the damage, like I did, did like a chump there, and it's gonna get bled in a minute, it's gonna be real bad. I'm trying to show stuff, it's making me uh, flimsy. There's hopefully you get the point. So, as long as you block that and then back off, we can get ranged out, recover that withered health if we want. So, provided you can control the situation a little bit, real nice thing to do. Um, I'm not going to be even attempting this, we're just going to let this guy put us down, because... Uh, firstly, I don't think many people are going to want me to have defeated this as a part of the series. Instead, this should be your New Game Plus target. You do get a special cutscene and a special item if you do it, though, so... Good to know. There you can see the Umbral form taking place. I read that, look, you see that the withered damage didn't actually kill me. Even though he's clearly capable of one-shotting us.
And I was like, hey, look, you've respawned. You should go and collect your currency again. Okay then, so the game's now like, hey, by the way, there are such things as like extra turnings that you can be taking. Food can I grind this loot? Um, haven't worked out this yet. My first stream's going to be this evening, so we'll be working stuff like that out. Um, if you do this, you're going to see a door, and we can't open this door right now. So when we manage to get whatever it is that opens that door, we will be back. I thought there was a... I thought there was a vestige. Right here. Strange. I guess not. I must have uh, misremembered it. With you. So this is teaching you about um umbral parasites. So occasionally you're gonna come across enemies. That let me just demonstrate this. If I get in here and try and damage this guy, it's not gonna do anything. Okay. So what we actually need to do is we need to make sure you've got your lantern selected. And you need to find where this thing is. Where is it? Sorry, stuff up there. Sometimes they can be hidden around corners and stuff, so you need to just find them and get them popped. So you're holding uh, left trigger and then R1 for that. Something to note is you can dodge while you're doing this, so if you need to get out of the way of something, you you can do that. This time is becoming a real issue already, look at that. <laughs> I'm trying to make the uh, mana last better than my initial time through here, because it was real tough to um, manage without burning through tons of tons of mana clusters and I don't really want to do that until we have access to a good source of them so anyways lantern out hold square target left trigger right trigger hold get on the platform and then same again I'm trying to remember where I remember there being a mechanic like this I don't know if we had stuff like this in um, Atlas Fallen. It's crazy so many games coming out with um, similar mechanics. It's really weird the same year. All right, and that takes us to the village of Hanamal. All right. Warped Vestige. Sepulchre. Was oh, that because this is the village? It must be. Okay, that's right. So we'll uh, finish the episode here. Hopefully helped you out a little bit. Be continuing on very soon. Make sure you talk to the NPC. Obviously, I'm going to go ahead and burn through his dialogue right now, and we will be ready to continue very shortly.